Hi, welcome to Anderson's TV. My name is Mike Patrick, and I'm going to give you five tips to improve your piano playing. Tip number one. Over the years, I've learned that piano playing is more 60% listening and 40% playing. Growing up, I love film music, so I always used to listen to music on films. One of my favorite pieces is like Mrs. Doubtfire. Why do I say all of that? I'm saying all of that because what you listen to comes out in your playing. I find that if I'm not listening to any music, it's harder for me to be creative and it's harder for me to kind of express. So I feel like if you enjoy rock music, listen to rock music. If you like peaceful, you know, yoga music, whatever it is, listen to whatever you love and you'll find over time that it will actually come out in your playing. Tip number two, inversions. Inversions are super important if you want to elaborate on the way you play your chords. So for example, So just now I played four different chords, but what I managed to do is play those four different chords in different shapes. If I've got a C chord, if I basically change the arrangement of the chord, it just gives me a different colour. So for example, C major, if I move this note up an octave, it just gives you different colours of the same chord. So if you use all of your chords, you just get lots of different colours. So the reason I like to invert my chords is because I'm really big on expressing. I like to play and express what I'm trying to say while I'm playing and I feel like inversions allow you to do that. If everybody's playing the same thing, instead of It's self-explanatory, so I feel like allowing to invert your chords, learning to invert your chords, allows you to express what you're trying to say in a much more profound way. So tip number three, you might notice a lot that I change the key while I'm playing. Every key is unique, every key has a different colour. So sometimes it's just nice to build momentum and build more of an atmosphere by changing key. So I've got a small little tip to show you. So if I'm in C again, if you go up three notes, a tone and a half is cool, but if I, if I go from C up to E flat, that's three notes, and then I go up another three notes, that's F sharp, and I go up again, uh, I go to A, and then I go up again, I'm back to C. Whatever I play in each key, if I continue playing the same thing, it will have a particular sound that makes it quite, prof it's quite a nice sound, and it's very easy to do, so if I'm, again, I'm going to play in C-sharp this time, but I'm going to keep going up tone and a halves and you'll hear the difference and I'll play the same thing, so... I was playing in uh, major, you can do the same thing in minor. So if you can learn to do that, it's the same thing. If you keep going up in thirds, it just brings a nice little color to your play. So that's a little tip for you. Tip number four. This is for keyboard players. When you're playing a sound on the keyboard, you want to do your best to try and sound as realistic as possible. So for example, I'm playing a piano now, so I'm going to approach the instrument like a piano. However, if I want to play a marimba, I'm going to have to try and approach the keyboard like I'm playing a marimba. In real life, if I'm playing a marimba, I'm only going to play two notes because I've got two mallets like that. 
Also, when I'm playing the marimbas, I'm gonna be, well, if I was to play marimbas, I'm going to be doing a bit of this. So I will always try and approach it like I'm actually playing a marimba. So that's one example. Another example is strings. So with strings, normally there's several different string harmonies. So you've got violin, viola, cello. So what I do, not everyone has to do this, but my left hand is the cello, my right hand's the violin. And you basically approach it like you're playing strings. So I could easily play strings like I'm playing piano. I'm holding about eight notes, but it's not gonna have the same effect. So you take your time and you choose your harmonies like So I, I mean, it's gonna take a little practice, but your approach is very, very important. Classical guitar, acoustic guitar. An acoustic guitar has six strings. You strum a, a, a guitar, so you're not gonna be able to play all of the notes at the same time. So if I'm playing acoustic guitar on the keyboard, I'm gonna try and strum like that, instead of going. And obviously there's different articulations that a guitar has. You'll never be able to really replicate it 100%, but just being mindful that you're trying to play an instrument has different articulations and has a different feel and a different approach always helps. So for example, different, like a more of a like flamenco kind of. So hopefully that makes sense. Tip number five is an easy one, it's really straightforward. Always practice and take things slow and steady. It sounds really easy, but it actually isn't. A lot of the time when I'm playing things, it's actually harder to play it slower than it is faster. So when you're practicing, take your time, take your time. A lot of the time when I'm practicing, for example, if I'm practicing, I'll literally do that for like 10, 15 minutes until I can actually feel that I don't have to think about it anymore. A lot of the, the more complicated chords and voicings I play, I have to take my time and I have to do it over and over and over. And I'm not, I'm not someone that comes and gets it straight away. I'm spending time at home just playing the same thing, same thing over. For example, again. And over time, you'll begin to find that the more you play it, the more you begin to get used to how you enjoy playing voicings. A lot of the time, me and Dan Bingham will always be sharing chords. And Dan will say, show me something that you play and I'll show it to him. And how Dan plays the chords that I've shown him will always be different to how I approach them. So when you're learning, it's not always about playing it exactly how you hear it or exactly how you're being taught. It's more about putting your little spice on it and taking your time and just making it your own. So that was five tips from me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what kind of other questions you might have. Let me know if it was helpful. Also, please do subscribe. Thank you guys.